It came from beyond our solar system, an interstellar traveller, unlike anything we've ever seen. Astronomers just found that Comet 3 iAtlas is breaking all the rules. The James Webb Space Telescope uncovered a shocking surge in its carbon dioxide emissions. This discovery is rewriting what we thought we knew about comets and about the ingredients of other star systems. What secrets does this traveller hold? Imagine spotting a comet that doesn't quite behave like any other we've tracked before. That's what astronomers just confirmed with 3 iAtlas, an interstellar object now showing a surge in carbon dioxide emissions that puzzles researchers. Normally, comets from our solar system have predictable activity patterns, but this one is breaking the rules. In this video, we'll walk through the James Webb Space Telescope's latest observations, why this unexpected CO2 spike is scientifically important, and what it tells us about material that formed outside our solar neighbourhood. Stay with me as we separate what's confirmed from what remains uncertain. Why interstellar visitors? Matter space may look crowded with comets, but in reality, almost all of them were born inside our own solar system. Only a handful, two so far with certainty, have been tracked as visitors from elsewhere. These cases are rare enough that when astronomers confirm one, it becomes a major scientific event. The first, named one, I, Oumuamua, passed by in 2017 with a strange cigar-like trajectory that left scientists debating whether it behaved more like a comet or like an asteroid. Two years later, in 2019, a second one appeared. That interstellar comet, 2 i borisov showed a much clearer tail and coma, looking far more like the icy bodies we usually track around the Sun. When researchers detected a third candidate in 2020, now catalogued as 3i Atlas, the community grew curious about how it might expand that very small dataset. Early signs suggested this comet might be different, and as telescopes followed its activity, scientists began to find evidence that it would not simply fit into the patterns set by the first two. That raised tension, because when so few examples exist, each one provides valuable tests of theories about how other planetary systems form. If Atlas turned out to behave strangely, it might not only widen the sample, it could also show chemistry that has no match among our local comets. To understand what makes these objects interstellar, it helps to define the term clearly. An interstellar object is one that is not bound by the Sun's gravity. Instead, it travels on a hyperbolic orbit, meaning it entered from beyond the solar system and will eventually leave again, never to return. This sets it apart from the thousands of icy comets in the Kuiper Belt and the distant Oort Cloud. Those regions act as reservoirs of frozen leftovers from the Sun's own formation. Interstellar arrivals, by contrast, carry building blocks that were shaped in other systems entirely. Because of that, astronomers often describe them as carrying messages in bottles. Each one could preserve traces of the conditions around its parent star billions of years ago. For instance, comets can lock away ices and dust grains that hold a chemical record of their nursery. By capturing their light and splitting it into spectra, researchers can read that record much like a fingerprint. NASA and the European Southern Observatory have both stressed that these interstellar samplers are among the few direct bits of evidence we can study without travelling to another star. The question becomes, what happens when we inspect that fingerprint and it does not look like the one local comets leave behind? That is the position with 3 i Atlas. Its unusual activity is giving scientists reason to think that planet-forming environments across the galaxy may not all work from the same recipe. What Webb would go on to reveal, in particular its striking emission of carbon dioxide, shows that this comet is not just repeating the usual performance. Instead, it is pointing toward deep differences in how planetary chemistry gets arranged. Next, we turn to what those Webb measurements actually showed, because the detail is where the mystery sharpens. JWST spots something unusual. When astronomers directed the James Webb Space Telescope toward 3 iAtlas, they were looking for something that could be compared with comets closer to home. 
the expectation was to see a chemical signature familiar from previous studies of icy bodies entering the inner solar system. Instead, the data revealed a sharp and surprising spike, one that immediately stood out from the background of typical cometary activity. The profile did not align with the balance seen in comets related to the Sun's own formation. The strength of Webb in this role comes from its infrared instruments. Infrared light is especially good at revealing what kinds of gases are escaping from a comet's surface. Every molecule absorbs and emits light at specific wavelengths. By breaking down the incoming light into a spectrum, researchers can identify the fingerprints of gases such as water vapour, carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. This science, called spectroscopy, is the most direct way we have of monitoring how comet ices react when exposed to sunlight. For comets born inside our system, the consensus pattern looks steady. When the surface warms, frozen water turns into vapour and is usually the most prominent component. Carbon dioxide often makes up the second largest portion, followed by carbon monoxide in smaller amounts. This relative balance reflects the temperature ranges and formation distances tied to the early solar nebula. In local comets, the ratios vary but stay within expected bands documented by decades of observation from both ground telescopes and spacecraft encounters. This is why the Webb results for 3i Atlas were taken so seriously. Instead of a proportional mix, the telescope recorded an unusually high quantity of carbon dioxide compared to water vapour. The difference was not subtle. It showed an amplification of carbon dioxide that moved far beyond the limits usually tracked in our survey of Oort cloud comets. In plain terms, the object was letting out more carbon dioxide than water, an inversion of the trend documented across our ice-rich population. Carbon dioxide levels in comets are not random. They often serve as a clue to the environment of origin. In solar system examples, the dominance of water indicates formation closer to a modest range of temperatures. The role of carbon dioxide grows when freezing conditions are colder but not extreme. What Webb detected therefore hints that Atlas either formed in a different thermal zone than most of our samples or came from a system where freezing conditions favoured carbon dioxide ice over water ice. An everyday comparison helps explain the surprise. It is like visiting a new cafe in town ordering coffee and realizing the recipe tastes completely different from any place you know. The drink is still coffee, but the proportions and preparation change the entire experience. In the same way, this comet is still releasing familiar chemicals, but with a recipe shifted enough to raise questions about the kitchen it came from. One thing that is settled is that Webb's spectrum leaves little doubt. The spike is not a miscalculation. The signal is clear and repeatable. That leaves the community asking what sort of star-forming environment could produce such a gas-rich comet. To look for answers, we need to consider possible origins, ranging from unusually cold birth disks to evolutionary changes encountered during its travel through space. Clues about a different home system. If 3i Atlas is releasing more carbon dioxide than water, the natural question is where that mix could have originated. A comet's chemistry is not random. It reflects the temperatures, radiation and dust environment in which it first took shape. These frozen materials form in the protoplanetary disks that circle young stars. Each disk varies in temperature and composition, so comets carry an imprint of those conditions even across billions of years of travel. This is why a single interstellar comet can be so informative. It preserves samples that otherwise would require a spacecraft to visit another planetary system. In our own system, the consensus from many observations is clear. Water dominates the gases that comets release once heated by the sun. Carbon dioxide tends to rank second, sometimes abundant but still smaller than water vapour. This order is not arbitrary. It reflects how water and carbon dioxide ices form and survive at different distances from the early sun. A reversed balance with more carbon dioxide than water suggests a very different recipe during planet formation. For researchers, that imbalance is a strong hint 
that three eye atlas formed in conditions that depart from those of the solar nebula. One working hypothesis is that it originated in a colder stellar nursery. In plain terms, a hypothesis means an informed explanation that still needs testing. Colder temperature zones allow carbon dioxide to freeze more readily and in greater volume, while water ice can be limited if conditions stay too cold during the earliest stages. Under such circumstances, a comet can build up layers rich in carbon dioxide ice, only to reveal them when warmed much later. If this is the case, Atlas would not be an anomaly, but instead a representative of a different category of star-forming environment. There are also competing views. Some scientists consider whether the excess carbon dioxide might not reflect its birth alone, but surface changes that happened later. Over time, a comet can lose large amounts of water ice during close passes near stars while retaining thicker layers of carbon dioxide beneath. If Atlas spent ages drifting through other systems or endured repeated warming and freezing cycles, its chemistry may have shifted. These scenarios give different explanations for the same result, but both remind us that the record locked inside a comet can be shaped by multiple stages of its history. What we do not yet know is whether Atlas is an isolated case or a normal product of its home system. With only two other interstellar visitors on record, there is no statistical baseline to compare. The surge in carbon dioxide raises the larger point. Not every star system builds comets with the same chemical priorities. Each may emphasize different ices depending on its environment. By following these visitors across space, scientists gain more than curiosities. They gain physical evidence of planetary diversity, reaching beyond what telescopes alone reveal when imaging exoplanets. Conclusion 3 IATLAS S shows that the building materials of planets are not the same everywhere. Its unusual carbon dioxide signal demonstrates that every interstellar object offers a comparison point with other stellar systems. Each one acts as a direct sample from beyond our own star's reach. As future telescopes and surveys locate more of these visitors, their chemical fingerprints will help us learn what is common and what is rare in galactic chemistry. To stay updated, follow the James Webb Space Telescope's work and surveys like the Vera Rubin Observatory, which could be the first to reveal the next unexpected traveller.